ready? Yep. All right, Jonathan. Seth. That's that would, introductions are out of the way. So I'm Seth Garden Swartz. Um, I'm here with hosting the Surefy Vlog, and we're here today talking with uh, Jotham at Bosque Brewing. And Bosque, if you don't know about Bosque, that means you probably don't live in New Mexico. You might not live in the Northern Hemisphere, as Bosque is one of the fastest growing brands in in the in the New Mexico beer scene. Um, opening, it's uh, typically the fourth tap room, right? Fourth one here. Yeah, this yep. this month you got one more coming up in the not too distant future. Yeah, well we're opening our production facility in uh, at the end of the year, hopefully. So right, that'll, that'll actually be number five. Right, that'll be number five. Right, so it'll be tap room and a production facility. Yep. And uh, in the last twelve months, also you have um, gone into the actual package business. Yes. So we've got uh, six packs with um, with leaps on them, like the <laughs> growlers back here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so the business is um, is booming. Yeah, business yeah. is going crazy. We just opened another tap room uh, last uh, two weeks ago in Las Cruces, yep. and um, ended up doing something like fifty percent more business than we thought we would uh, right out of the gate. And so we ended up uh, broke the internet. Bro- well, yeah, yeah, we did. We did actually break the internet. Yeah, you did break the internet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the, the router went down for sure. But right. no, we we needed to hire more staff really quickly, and there were some definite growing pains. I don't. I think it was fine customer side, but internally we were all scrambling. So, so Gabe, I was talking to Gabe about this a little uh-huh. minute ago, and he said, yeah, felt felt like for a while you were, like, pushing the boulder up the hill. It was really, really hard. And yeah. now you're, like, running so hard to try to get after the boulder on the other, on the other yeah. side. So that that's uh, the second worst problem you could be having right now. Second worst, yeah. Right, right. So, <laughs> cool. Well, so I, I wanted to just sort of talk to you about a couple of things. One is um, the the company is not very old, right. really. It's, it's just a few years old. We were founded in uh, October. Well, yeah, October 2012 is when we opened. Right. So, so how did you how did you build the brand? Like, like what what what's the what does the brand mean, or what do you want it to mean to the to the public out there? Um, sitting down with my partners when we were getting getting going, um, we love the idea of the, of the Bosque. It's the wooded river, the wooded area that runs along the river here in, in Albuquerque, um, and it, we noticed that a lot of people from all different walks of life would come to the Bosque to do family things to. To run to bike um, some people kayak there you know there's all, all kinds of different things happening but the one thing is uh, you know all people from different walks of life convene there and so we wanted to do something similar with our tap room that was bringing the bosky indoors and um, like as a metaphor as a place that people can connect well yes and also trying to recreate something physically that makes you feel um, some of that bosky aesthetic in our tap room so we have you know a lot of like wood tones and right. uh, very comfortable sort of environment right. so yeah no, so, that's, it's, it's funny you say that because when um i was just listening to the to the guy who invented the um the irish pub in a box uh-huh. and he was an architecture student they studied like the architecture of the of all the best irish pubs uh-huh. and they figured out the common elements were and, and so now you say that and i've been in all your tap rooms, yeah. and not the brand new one yet, but uh, yeah, like you, you could walk in blindfolded and open your eyes and not see the see the, the sign, and you still know that you're right. You're in one of your tap rooms, so yes. that's awesome. And we're we're doing a lot of work towards making that even more cohesive as we go forward. So like our Knob Hill tap room is probably the one that's the most dissimilar to the other two, and uh, we're in the process of expanding that one and adding the same furniture and the same aesthetic in there to. Uh, really tie the three tap rooms together. Cool. Yeah. Cool. No, that's 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 uh, that's amazing. And, and the other story that I actually heard out before we ever actually met was mm-hmm. um, how you made a very conscious decision to work on the process of how people work in your in your business. Right. Um, tell me a little about that. Well, we we realized that um, when we were small. It was really easy for us to pass our culture on to the people that worked right alongside of us um, because we were getting constant, you know, daily interaction with those people. Right. And then as we started to grow, we realized, why are these people that are working in our other tap rooms making different decisions than we would make? Like, what, what hap- what's right. happening here? So we took a step back and we started to identify the fact that we were a personality-based leadership and we moved towards a um, values-based leadership. And so we spent a lot of time behind closed doors trying to distill what our what was important to us in the form of values. And so it's really, I think values are often 
like they're boring and a lot of people right. are like, oh, oh good, you got oh, values. Yeah. Shoot the values class, got to yeah. got to got to relax. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But we we really um, we we live by them. We we call them our framework for autonomy. So we have these these things that if I'm going to make a decision, these are the filters that I run everything through. Right. And so we want each of our coworkers to have that same sort of framework to be able to say I'm going to make a decision um, without you know somebody breathing down my neck and uh, then whenever we go to them and say why'd you make that decision they can say well I did it because it's in line with this value this value this value and it gives us something that we can um, I can go talk to the people in Las Cruces or the people in Knob Hill or the people in San Mateo and they should all have that same sort of like compass to guide them right and that was kind of our our I don't know. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Yeah. More, more. So, okay. so do you feel like you get um, more more decisions that are what you would have made, or do you feel like you get um, different decisions, but within a framework of things that maybe you wouldn't have thought of? I think that they're we're on the right track. So yeah. that is something that took us a long time to to figure out, and then now, like once we kind of nailed it down, we started passing that you know, out company wide. Then we went through a major growth spurt with um, launching our package line, right. which, you know, caused this really big growing pains in our organization. And then we just opened Las Cruces. And like I said, you know, it caused even more growing pains. So now we're over a hundred employees. And, and so disseminating that information to so many different people is, is becoming more difficult. Right. And so I'd say that it's still a work in process, but that there are, that it has shown a lot of fruit. Right. You know, with something that the guys in the brewery live by, right. and the guys in the kitchen live by, and they, then the the staff in the front of house lives by, and the distro guys live by. So it's it's real. You, you find you think you think about that. They all seem like they're separate, but from a consumer point of view, it's all part of this experience. Like you walk yeah. in, someone greets you. You know, the the glass was clean, the food was hot, the beer was what you expect. You know, yeah. was fantastic, and and person talk, could talk to you about it mm -hmm. and not like oh this guy's in the kitchen yeah. no. but you know it's funny because you're you're really trying to tie together so many different personalities and so many people that um like people that thrive in the kitchen right. often don't thrive up front and right people that thrive in the brewery right. don't necessarily thrive in distro so you're you're really dealing with a big wide diverse group of personalities right and so they and they have you know d direct reports that they have to answer to and right. those people are very different and so you know how do you how do you say okay there's a hundred people that are all very very different and unique and have unique perspectives and all that and hope that that person will make the same decision I will make right <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why we had to right. put all that together well that's congratulations on on seeing that need an opportunity earlier than a lot of businesses do I <laughs> it's a it's always a group think around here we don't like I, I can't take any credit for that but we we definitely um it's always it's always for a long time it was a reaction to um problems we we felt like we were constantly reacting right okay something's going wrong now what do we do right and so what we were really trying to do under really under the leadership of gabe our managing director is try to figure out how can we be less reactionary and more proactive right and I think that was the kind of the catalyst for a lot of that growth. Right. And the the so in, so in addition to the the um, that sort of tap room centered growth, you've also you're now selling. Now I can go to the local liquor store and, and get a six pack of yep. uh, of Bosque and even get growlers not at a Bosque tap room. Tell me about how. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that that process. Well, we have been uh, self distributing for. The last couple of years and so we were doing um primarily just draft sales right. uh, throughout throughout new mexico it was really albuquerque and santa fe were our main focus areas although we did have some uh, traction in taos right. um but then whenever we went ahead and launched our package line um it was it was clear to us that we weren't going to be able to get the um the reach that we really wanted and so we we signed on with a distributor that has taken over most of our package and uh, actually they're taking over all of our package and like big chain accounts that we couldn't get into right. and then everything outside of Albuquerque Santa Fe so our beer is available and I mean almost everywhere throughout the state now right um, at least in package form right 
It's six pack form. Six pack, yeah. Right. Sorry, and then uh, we also have draft accounts, and like like Roswell is now our number three or number four market. Roswell, you know, New, yeah, Mexico. Roswell yeah. New Mexico, yeah. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, they've done they've been a really great partner for us to to get this beer, um, just out to the masses of uh, masses, <laughs> New Mexico. The masses, of New, yeah, yeah. 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 Masses it's all it's all relative, right? It's all yeah, relative, you're yeah. right, right. Uh, but, um. Yeah, so that's where that's where we're at right now with them, and that's part of part of that's been kind of our story as far as what our distri- how our distribution is taken off. But right. you know, we want to retain our self distribution here in Albuquerque and Santa Fe because a lot of these clients are personal relationships of ours, right. and um, we our our distro team really prides themselves on they just do a great job at draft. So their right. customer service is high. They're always keeping lines clean. They're you know. Um, they're on time. It's, it's, so it's part of the experience for those, right. like their customers too, like the exactly. the, the, the on-premise accounts, exactly. right? Uh, so, so how does your, tell me about the relationship between like, how, do, how does your, how do you think about your tap rooms as they relate to building the brand for, for package and, and uh, other on-premise accounts? We call it the Whirlpool. Um, and so... <laughs> The whirlpool is part of the brewing process, you know, like where the right. spin the the wort that after the the hops have uh, been been boiled and a lot right. of the oils and stuff have been extracted. Anyway, all that stuff settles down at the bottom. But uh, I don't remember who came up with that, but we call it the whirlpool. Anyway, it's, it's cool. They, they have them in the Bosque. Right? There's, there's some little whirlpools right yeah. there, so you got a you got some meta action going. That's cool. Right. Uh, but anyway, the the idea is that people will experience Bosky in in several different ways. They'll either they'll either experience Bosky for the first time through a package product, uh, or or a draft product at a different, you know, a different um, account that's not our own. Right. Uh, or a unique event. We put on a lot of different unique events, or the tap room, and that those things all feed each other. So we want the experience that they have with a package product to not only feed them to a unique event or to our tap room. Um, but to also go a little further down the whirlpool and deepen the customer engagement. So we feel like all those things kind of work together synergistically to, to bring somebody into a, um, like a deeper relationship with us. Right. No, that's, that's cool. So that, that gives you the ability to experience the brand. There's a couple of different entry points Mm -hmm. and, you know, at least until, Initially, it was just the tap rooms, right? Mm-hmm. It was the, the only so you sort of came to the mother. She's like, the, this was the first tap room. Right. The brewery's right there. Mm-hmm. You know, the restaurants, you know, the, the tap rooms next door. So you come in next to the brewery, drink the beer, full experience. And then there's another tap room. So you can, you know, if you live on that side of town or if you're over there, you can do that. And now you can go sort of. So if I started in the tap room, I might in the liquor store say, oh, here's that. There's that. There's that leaf. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember that great time I had at the tap room. Right. You know, and what, what, how do you think about, I mean, you, every brewery has a couple of core beers, you know, one or two SKUs that represent like an enormous chunk of the, chunk of the, chunk of the business. How important is, is it to you to have customers experience some other options? I want people to drink what they like. Um, but I think that's one of the things that makes the brewing industry so fun is that there's a bunch of different beers that you would never taste. Like right now we have a, a beer on um, that's a, a Saison that's been brewed with uh, Sauvignon uh, Blanc grape juice as well. Why? Because it sounds like a really interesting flavor combination right. and we're going to try it and it was and it's great, you know? Right. And so I think there's... Like your summer stout, we tried that last, oh yeah, the last summer, summer too, yeah. So, I mean, I think... I think I think of people kind of like myself. Like I'm a creature of habit. Right. I'm probably going to drink an IPA almost everywhere I go. Right. Um, but then, oh, I, I do want people to be able to like experience the different, you know, um, out of the box kind of beers that we that we produce, um, and to have fun doing that. But then also to have something to fall back on. Right. So they got to Yeah. I, I think that it's really. I was telling I was telling you the story. I, I was telling to Gabe the other day about or just today about um, meeting someone here who said, I like, I want something light. And so she ordered a light colored beer and I ordered the seasonal because I always wanted something different. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, God, your, your beer is 
better. Like, yeah. Or I liked yeah. it. She didn't say it was better. She said, I liked it better. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, well, it's a English style, you know, um, pale ale. So right. it's lower hopped and, you know, it's it's more amber colored. But, you know, mm-hmm. you're drinking a, a lager, which is a little bit higher.